Hi and welcome to a video on cumulative frequency tables. Here's what you'll learn. How to organize data in order to make cumulative frequency tables. Now first of all, what is a cumulative frequency table? A cumulative frequency table is just one of many different ways of displaying data. Cumulative frequency tables are almost identical to frequency tables. While frequency tables are made up of two columns, one column indicating what's being counted and a second column recording the number of items counted in that group, cumulative frequency tables have a third column. And it's this third column that keeps track of how many data items you've accounted for in each row. Now before we continue, you need to note, making cumulative frequency tables is quite similar to making frequency tables. In fact, one just builds on the other. So this video will not go into making a frequency table. If you're interested in learning how to make a frequency table, please watch my video titled Frequency Tables. If you watched that video titled Frequency Tables, at the end we created a frequency table with the data shown on this screen, and our table looked like this. It was a list of ice skating student ages grouped in intervals of four, five to eight, nine to twelve, thirteen to sixteen, and so forth. Now, we want to turn this frequency table into a cumulative frequency table, and the only difference is adding a third column. We have to give that column a heading. What do you think it's called? Cumulative frequency. Cumulative just means total. So we want to go row by row and figure out how many items we've accounted for already in our data. The first row, the five to eight year olds, there were ten of those. So our cumulative frequency so far is ten. Now we go down to the next row, we have the 10 from the first row, plus the 7 from this row for a total of 17. We take that 17 and add it to the 5 from the next row for a total of 22. See how easy it is to make a cumulative frequency table? We take the 22 and add it to the 2. We've now accounted for 24 data items, and finally take the 24, add it to the 2, and we end up with 26. Now here's the value of a cumulative frequency table. That 26 at the bottom should match all the number of data items that we started out with in the big red circle at the top. Now the following data shows the ages of 20th century presidents at inauguration. We want to make a cumulative frequency table of this data. As with all data, we start by putting the numbers in order from least to greatest. So let's take a look at the data. It looks like the smallest number up here is a 42. So I'm going to write down the number and cross it off as I use it. That way I'm sure I don't miss any data when I'm rewriting them in order. We've got a 42 and then a 43, 46, a 51, another 51, another 51. So there are three 51s. A 52, 54, 55, 55, 56, 56, 60, a 61, 62, 64 and 69. All of the data items in our original list are now marked off, so I'm sure they're included in the ordered list that we just made. Now that our numbers are in order, we need to figure out what our interval of ages is going to be for each row of data we plan to plot. And for school purposes, frequency tables and cumulative frequency tables, for that matter, are easiest to read when we have about five rows of data. So the first thing we need to do is find the range of the data. Remember, the range is always the largest number. In this case, it's 69 minus the smallest number, 42. We subtract those two, and we find out our range is 27. Now, this information is going to help us determine what intervals we're going to use in each row of our cumulative frequency table. The intervals must be equal from row to row. So if we want five rows and the range is 27, we take 27 and divide it by 5. 27 divided by 5 is 5.4. Now we don't want decimal intervals, so we'll round 5.4 up to 6. Now remember that number 6 because we're going to need it to create our frequency table. Here's a blank table. Guess what we're going to call the first column? Well, what is this data? It's the ages of presidents at inauguration. Let's label the second column. That's always the frequency column. And what's the third column? You guessed it. It's the cumulative frequency. Now, let's start filling in the intervals under ages at inauguration. We're going to have an interval of six in the top row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row, and the fifth row. Equal intervals all the way down the chart. What is our first interval going to be? 
Do we need to start at zero? Hardly. The youngest president was 42 when he was inaugurated. So let's make that 40 to 45. Now don't be screaming. We want an interval of six and people are going 40 to 45. That's only five because 45 minus 40 is five. That's not the way it works. Count on your fingers if you have to. We have 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. We definitely have an interval of six with 40 to 45. Now let's fill in the rest of the intervals. Just add six to the, all the prior numbers. So 40 plus six is 46. And 45 plus 6 is 51, so our next interval is 46 to 51. Add 6 to each of those numbers and get a next interval of 52 to 57. The next group is 58 to 63. And the last interval of 6 would be 64 to 69. Now let's start counting how many presidents were inaugurated between the ages of 40 and 45. And I've circled them in the chart up above. Turns out there are just 2, so our frequency is 2. What's our cumulative frequency? Well, we've only counted two of them, so our cumulative frequency has to be two as well. How many presidents were 46 to 51 at inauguration? Okay, I've circled them up above. Turns out there are four of them. So we put four in the frequency column, mark them off, and add two and four together to get a cumulative frequency of six. We've already accounted for six of our data items. How many presidents were inaugurated between age 52 and 57? Looks to me like there are six up there. We'll mark them off and figure out what our cumulative frequency is. Six plus six is 12. So, so far we've accounted for 12 data items. How many presidents were inaugurated between 58 and 63 years of age? That would be three. So we take that three and we're going to add it to 12 to find out that our cumulative frequency now is 15. And finally, how many presidents were inaugurated between 64 and age 69, that would be the last two in our data. So we're going to take the 15, add it to the 2, and get 17. And we can always check ourselves with the cumulative frequency table because the 17 down at the bottom should match the total number of data points we started with. Congratulations! You've made a cumulative frequency table, but there's one more thing to do. Don't forget to add a title. Ages of 20th century presidents at inauguration. We're done. You've made a cumulative frequency table. Congratulations. You learned how to organize data in order to make cumulative frequency tables.